for the invitation. Uh, great to be here on this campground in Eindhoven. Uh, my name is Klaus Mitterlina, and, and together with my colleague uh, Josef Grossman, uh, we will talk about the our process mining journey at Raiffeisen Bank International. Um, so I screened up front. I was not aware that uh, you're doing this already seven years. So I screened just um, this year and last year, and um, my perception was that the uh, um, financial service industry or banking is, is lagging behind a little bit here. So there were not so many participants here from the financial service industry. Um, quite interesting, your slides about um, how, how process mining is spreading out to, to all these different regions. Uh, and I recently heard that um, now it's spreading to North America, uh, and, and there especially uh, all the financial service providers jump on process mining, so uh, it seems to be different in, in, the, in North America than compared to Europe. But maybe in the Netherlands it's different, I don't know, uh, because I remember when um, I visited um, a huge corporate bank here uh, in Utrecht, yeah, so uh, a couple of years ago, uh, yeah, but there it's, it's, it's in Utrecht, I, I think, yeah, so, um, so two, three or two years ago, and they were already in this heavy transformation, uh, digital transformation, and, and um, we had some talks to them, and it was great to, to see this um, digitization, automation exercise they're running, um, and that was the first uh, contact for me, uh, so this was probably in 2016, um, when they mentioned also process mining because I think they were one of the, the early um, banks applying process mining. And maybe this is uh, because of the proximity of uh, Eindhoven and, and Utrecht, I don't know. Um, so, but for RBI, it took, it took some years more uh, to, to jump on the train, so we are quite in an early stage. Uh, so, um, we are, so for those who don't know Raiffeisen Bank International, um, I have some, some, some key figures here. Uh, so we are still in this early stage. We started our journey now a year ago, so mid of, mid of 2018. Um, so we, we did this normal stuff, evaluation, uh, POC, things like that. So we started probably um, end of 2017, start of 2018. Um, to move on, to give you some, some insights about RBI, uh, so RBI is a, is a leading banking group, um, mainly operating in uh, Central and Eastern Europe. Um, so we are a corporate, cooperative bank as well, like, like this bank in Utrecht. Um, but um, we are, we are, I would say we are, we are quite a, s a special animal uh, because um, we have this um, diverse geographical footprint. So we are operating in 14 markets, um, as you can see here. Um, headquartered in Austria, so in Vienna, so we're based in Vienna, but uh, we're just doing corporate business there. Uh, and uh, in, in all the other countries, um, we are um, doing mainly retail business. So we have, uh, overall, we have 16 million customers and uh, slightly below 50,000 employees. Um, but we are one group. Uh, and uh, as you can see here, so this is our geographical footprint. So. Um, we are quite specific when it comes to, to, uh, to the size of countries and to the maturity of countries because we have uh, huge countries like Russia uh, and we have also small countries like Kosovo or Albania um, where we have just a few, a few hundreds of employees and in the big countries uh, we have uh, a few thousands in each of those countries. Uh, we, we are aiming to be um, top five market position in most of our countries. Um, so, which is not, not really feasible in, in the large countries like Russia or Romania. Uh, and uh, quite interesting is also that um, we have different uh, legislations, jurisdictions, uh, because um, I would say five, six countries are now uh, part of the European uh, community and the others are not. Uh, so it's not, not so easy, you know, to get access to data uh, or to, trans to, to, to send data from one country to another. Uh, and to do such exercises. So, uh, Josef and me, um, we, are both, we are both part uh, of, a, of a unit which is called um, Group Efficiency Management. So, what we are doing is, 
uh, we have a kind of governance function within our group. Um, so we are headed in, in, in Vienna, in the headquarter, but we take care and we give support uh, to our countries um, when it comes to, so beside a certain governance function, when it come, uh, when it, when it, uh, so we give support to them uh, in the area of um, improvement of processes. Um, so we are either former operation guys or former lean guys, Six Sigma guys. Um, and uh, in, the, in the last two to three years, we also started uh, to get into what we call um, smart automation. So as we were looking for, for tools and capabilities which, which allow our, our business units and network banks also to apply uh, capabilities um, which need low IT involvement, low coding, uh, ideally no IT involvement, um, so that they are able to, to apply these technologies, capabilities on their own, so that they can get self-sufficient. Uh, and here we, we did investigations and came up with a kind of a portfolio. Um, and within this portfolio, we embedded also process mining. And uh, you can see now here, uh, we, we, we have four major pillars. So the first one is capture automation. So this is about um, all types of uh, extracting um, data and information from uh, any types of input. Let it be um, text, unstructured documents, uh, voice, video information. The second one is this insights automation. So really gaining insights uh, from data or from process data. Um, so here we have the process mining and beside the process mining we have the, what we call the augmented data discovery. So using tools uh, which can be used by non-data scientists um, to, to do some um, exercises, for example, classification or, or, or clustering, things like that. Uh, and then we have two more pillars. Um, the third one is the workforce automation. So here we are talking about um, robotic process automation, for example. So really using virtual workforce. Uh, and uh, the second one is these uh, virtual agents or chatbots. Um, and the last pillar here is uh, in, when if you plug the things together, you, you need a kind of orchestration uh, for the processes. And, and here um, we have, um, depending on the complexity, we have different capabilities ranging from simple task automation to also uh, automating um, knowledge work with cognitive automation or also um, the classical process automation, business process management. Um, if, if there are more complex decisions, then uh, we are talking about decision automation. And, and here we started um, with process mining and uh, we, we, we believe that the process mining um, has its, its um, merits within this uh, automation uh, portfolio. Um, to, to, to explain a little bit our journey, I have to, to go back, so mid of last year, so when we started, um, when we found out that nobody is aware of process mining and then we have to start really from scratch uh, and, and to, to do this awareness building. So uh, we did, um, you know, internal posts, uh, we started to to organize a business breakfast, inviting business people uh, so that we, we educate them uh, what this process mining about. Um, currently, we have a, a, a TV spot running uh, on some screens in, in our head office. Um, so again, getting in contact with people who are interested. Um, what we did as well is uh, we talked to, to, to uh, managers, offered them to do free discoveries um, just to, to to show them what um, we can do with process mining. Um, and then uh, it started a little bit, uh, you know, kind of word of mouth, so they, they talk to others. Uh, and, uh, but uh, at the end, um, this is an ongoing, ongoing task. Um, so what we, what we believe that uh, this uh, will never, never stop. Yeah? So we have to do this uh, on a daily basis. Um, what we also uh, learned already is that um, process mining is great, yeah, and we, we are passionate uh, process miners, but um, it's, all, it's all about the data, so uh, we put quite a lot of effort uh, in, or we have to put quite a lot of effort uh, in the preparation, uh, and here we, we also build up some, some knowledge, some skills uh, here in, in the preparation and cleansing. 
Um, in the meantime, I mean, we did process mining, as, as we believe this is a agnostic to any, any topic uh, on, on bank level. Um, we did quite a lot of discoveries in different areas on bank level, also with, with, with some of our network banks. Um, and, and have here um, some, some insights already. When, uh, unfortunately, we are not uh, able to, to uh, show or present um, most of our cases uh, because uh, we agreed with, with our counterparts um, not to talk outside of the bank. But uh, we, we have one case with us, and then Josef uh, will present to you in a few minutes um, um, one case uh, from the consumer lending area. Um, our aim is, as you can see here, to, to further seed and plant uh, the mindset here. Um, so that, um, and this is really our, in our DNA uh, within group efficiency to look at processes or customer journeys from an end-to-end -end perspective. Yeah, so this, this is really our aim. What, we, what currently we are doing with process mining is um, ad hoc discoveries. So as, as I told you, we are in this early stage, so really doing just um, on request, um, a discovery. Um, we, are, we want to move in this area uh, of, um, so we see this as a kind of a development path. So coming from this ad hoc discovery, embedded uh, in, in transformation exercises, and what you've seen as, as our title of the presentation, this is more our target. Yeah, we, are, we are not there yet, but this is our target uh, to embed uh, process mining as, as, a, as a standard capability in, 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 any, in any of our transformation exercises. And maybe uh, in, uh, it, it, in, in a, I don't know, a couple of months or years, um, depending on, on our speed and velocity, um, we want to go into this area of, of continuous monitoring, but currently, um, as, as I mentioned, we are, we are really lagging behind, probably uh, compared to others. Um, so. I would like to, to move on um, and hand over to, to Josef uh, the, the, and, and he will explain to you in which areas we have done already some, some cases. Thank you, Klaus. Um, so I will talk a little bit um, about the areas where we applied process mining in a bank, in which products, processes, areas we have applied it. And I would like to show you also one concrete use case and give you a flavor of how our standardized approach and delivery to process mining looks like. And basically for us, when it comes to process mining, we're pretty much agnostic to the area where we applied in the bank. We applied it in the front office, so at the branches, mid office, somewhere in the back office in the processes. We applied it in investment banking, corporate banking, any kind of products, be it mortgages or credit cards or IT. So we feel that really in, in the banking environment, you know, working in a bank, you have hundreds of systems producing tons of data and uh, process mining is really a very useful tool for us to kind of extract information from this data. And I'd like to show you one concrete use case where we apply process mining from one of our network banks, um, and the area is actually consumer lending. I mean, you know, banking is pretty straightforward business. You take money and you give it away to somebody else and you try to make money somewhere in between. And that's exactly kind of the process that we're talking about over here. So consumer lending, imagine that you would like to, you know, buy something for your wife for Christmas, get a personal loan, or you have a credit card, or you want to buy a new fancy house somewhere here in Eindhoven, so you want to take a mortgage. So we're talking about really lending process, about lending money to people. And, and for us, um, in this specific use case, um, we analyzed the um, lending process over the, over, the, over the time of six months in a, in a concrete network bank. Um, the process actually, the consumer lending process for us, it's divided into two parts. Like the first part, we call it consultation or the sales part. So this is the part when you come into the branch or you're not sure which product to choose, we help you to choose the product. And once you agree that you would like to you know, apply for a loan, this is where the consultation part ends, and then starts what we call the origination part, which is exactly like from the moment you decided to have a product until you actually get the product, you get the money on your account. And we are fortunate enough that actually, in this given example, all this data was available in two different systems. So we didn't have that much of a uh, challenge to put this data together. There was a unique ID through which we could connect all these cases together. Um, 
I would say it didn't take us that long to extract the data. Um, maybe Klaus also mentioned it that basically we actually got to get the data from the IT guys who extracted from the IT systems. We joined it together, and then the most time that we are actually uh, spending on is doing the actual analysis on the data. Uh, but before I show you um, examples of what we have found out, I, I wanted to mention, I think it's, it's quite interesting that, you, you know, we're, we're bankers, so like our executives, what do they like? PowerPoints, right? Like this is our bread and butter in the end. So we have kind of a standardized approach and delivery and templates, how we present the results from our findings to our executives. And just to give you a flavor, this is just a sample of how such a close-out report after a mini-discovery looks like. Basically, it shows the findings, uh, has some nice, nice fancy charts and KPIs, and, and show, show our executives what we found out. And of course, if they're interested at a later stage, we open up the tool and we dig deep and we show them the actual results. But for us, you know, we, all, we all always, have, always have to have some kind of a nice fancy presentation in the background. Uh, so moving on to the case, um, this is actually the, the fancy marketing campaign. Um, the, the language is actually Bulgarian. So imagine I take you on a journey that you have this old Volkswagen new Beetle and you want to buy your fancy new car, a Mercedes-Benz maybe, and you want to take a loan for that. So that's exactly the process that we've been uh, researching or looking at. Um, when it comes to the data, you know, no surprises here. You have the minimum requirements. You have the ID of the customer, you have activity, and you have a timestamp. Um, but we also were very lucky, actually fortunate, that we got some extra data for us to analyze. So uh, we also got the data about in which branch the sale happened, what kind of products uh, the customer actually wanted, was the VIP customer, which region was that, and also anonymized uh, data about the, actually the banker who was selling this product. And, and coming <laughs> from Austria, of course, uh, we take pride in privacy and customer data privacy. So basically also the data that we had was heavily anonymized, the data that we looked at. And there was this question like, how long does the analysis take you? Well, for us, actually the longest time it takes to get the data and to anonymize it and to make sure that we can use it. The, the analysis itself, we do within one to two weeks max, that kind of the mini discoveries uh, that we are doing. And in this specific use case, uh, we looked at the data over six months, we looked at mortgages, we looked at credit cards, we looked at uh, personal loans. Uh, interesting fact, um, compared to the previous colleague who was presenting, actually, that um, we do these exercises as black box exercises. And we do it for a reason. So we do not really involve subject matter experts up front. We do not sit them while we do the analysis. We say, well, just get me the data. I look into the data and I try to figure out what's what's going on, whether you know what the heck is going on, whether everything everything is okay, or there's something needs to be improved. So we really take it as a black box exercise without kind of consulting um, upfront the subject matter experts. Yeah, sure. We're we doing this as black box exercise. Does not mean that we don't have any idea about the process. So we have high level domain expertise yeah. as well, uh, but um, we believe that uh, we we are not that bias, so if we don't have these upfront discussions already. Uh, and then uh, we, we try to, to define our own assumptions uh, and, and to do this analysis. Uh, and then later on we have the discussions with the domain experts. Yeah? And, and then we go into the tool and then show it to them. And uh, so, so this is meant by, by black box exercise. Yeah. OK. Um, so basically, we loaded the data into the process mining tool, and a nice chart comes up. And then, like for me, this was really a kind of a revelation, a little bit like that I had two years ago. Because back in 2015, 16, I would be running on workshops, you know, discussing with subject matter experts over long hours. What exactly are you doing? Trying to understand what they do. And we would, you know, have long Kaizen sessions and do post-it notes and try to figure out how the process looks like. Then I would disappear for a month and I would come up with a chart like that. And then that's the part where we would start discussing. But what process mining helped us is actually within a matter of seconds, I had already, a, you know, a process map like that and I could really start the discussion. And if you look at this, you know, this is a happy path for all the products. This is a mixed view. So you have mortgages, credit cards, and also personal loans. 
Okay, what does this tell me? Let's try to drill down for personal loans. So we did a little bit of a filtering to see how does the personal loan process look like. And as you may, as you may see, actually the, you have the personal loan process on the left and you have the credit card process on the right. Well, obviously what you can see is that pretty much the process is the same, which wasn't really surprising because Kind of for us at the end, whether plastic comes out at the end of the day or you know money is deposited into your account, it should not really make a difference. Okay. Um, we also looked at um, kind of the variations. Uh, so we increased the, the we zoomed in a little bit, and as you see, like it already starts to get a little bit messy. You see all the variants, you see all the spider charts, and um, you see that there are differences between personal loans and credit cards in terms of different variants that uh, the the process is running through. Uh, we looked at mortgages. It's a little bit more complex. Well, in mortgage process, in mortgage lending, you have kind of a couple of extra steps. You have property evaluation, so you kind of expect it to be a little bit more uh, complex, but this is still kind of the happy view and the little spider chart that is completely unreadable. This is kind of all our uh, variations in a process. But what, what, what does this really tell me in the end? Um, you know, for us, consumer lending, this kind of should be very, very standardized business in the end. So there's, there's a big difference if you lend 100,000 100, euros to somebody for a house or 100 million euros to a company, which is a very tailor-made business. But when it comes to consumer lending, it should be pretty standard because otherwise we're losing money. But what we saw also here, if you look at the statistics that we had 18,000 cases, but they had 1.5 thousand different variants. So basically every 15th mortgage or personal loan was following a different path. And, and for us, this is not really a good sign because we're losing money. It's getting more complex. You know, there, there, there are multiple repetitions in the process. And that's why we wanted to kind of um, look into that a little bit more into details. And what we also saw that a couple of activities were happening more often. There were, you know, kind of risk decisions that were happening even four or five times for the same case until they decided whether you are eligible to get a loan. So things, things got a little bit more complex. We looked also at the case duration. And <laughs> I, yes, yeah, these are extremities between nine minutes and 144 days. And believe me, like 144 days, that's a difference between nice Christmas and bad Christmas if you want to get a loan. This is what we try to avoid. Um, but on average, uh, from the data showed us that it took pretty much 12 business days to, um, to underwrite a standard lending product. Uh, but there are a couple of extremities that, that you need to look at. And I think what process mining really helps us is helps us to, to, to dig down and slice and dice the data and I can go and zoom in like why, what happened in this exact case? Why did it take 144 days? Were we waiting for the client or did we do something wrong in the end? Uh, we looked also um, at the variance and unsurprisingly, you know, the 80-20 rule also works over here. So if you look at the variance, like 1% of the variance actually was it uh, cover 80% of all the cases in the end. So maybe it doesn't look that bad. Okay. It seems that there is a, there is a kind of, of happy path, so taking these 90 variants, so this seems to be the, the standard path. Uh, but the, the high variation is mainly driven by this uh, amount and order uh, and iterations of the activities. So, uh, you know, if the sequence is different, then it's already a variant. Yeah? So, and uh, then we have also some pending cases, so they, they are shown as variants as well because we didn't eliminate them. So it's really a huge number of variants, but uh, it's, it's also to, to, um, to show to the business side yeah, um, that um, it's not uh, as, as they would expect, or if they would have to draft the process, then probably they would draft quite a linear process, but uh, in, in reality uh, it's different, yeah, just to, to show them this, this high complexity and high variation mm. of the process. And how usually there's how a... How the process is lived really in reality. And there's a bit of a kind of a 
shock moment when we show this to the executives and like, yeah. you know, they, they have their like kind of mindset, like how the process runs and it's smooth. They look at the KPIs. Yeah, it's pretty straightforward. And, and these, like, are the, these are the, the simple cases. If we would go to, to the corporate lending, which is really tailor-made business, then probably each single case is a variant because yeah. it's, it's tailor-made business. Yeah. Like the corporate case, we don't have it here, but it really looked like a children's drawing in the end. Like, and like the executives were shocked, like, what is this? Is this your process? It's like, okay. Um, let's maybe move forward. <laughs> move forward. I, I really like this chart. Um, I like um, we looked we looked at the frequency and performance indicators also also of the process. You have this like classic standard filtering that you can you can look at and to see what's what's happening. And on the left hand side, we looked at the actually the case frequency and the maximum repetitions. And as you may see, of course, um, the first step is selecting the product, which occurs naturally the most often, like in 8,000 cases. But roughly only in 5,000 cases, it came to the decision in risk. So like we're kind of losing 3,000 cases in between the guys coming to the branch and actually somebody deciding whether they need that specific loan, be it because of fraud reasons, be it because we couldn't verify their income, or they just simply decided to go somewhere else because maybe it took too long for us to decide. So there's a significant dropout rate over there. And also, for example, so out of the 8,000 kind of people walking in in the branch, only for 3,000 we created an agreement and they came and they signed, signed the um, agreement for us. And for specific cases, even up to six times, you had to go to risk and do the risk kind of decision, which obviously takes time, costs, and, and kills us on the standard unit cost a little bit. Um, on the performance indicators, we looked at the minimum durations and, um, and the median durations, and we see like for a lot of these activities, for example, fraud, you have, they, they happen instantly. Um, most of the time, but um, the medium duration could be even you know, 30, 33 minutes. So it kind of gives you a little bit of a view on, in terms of like how long these activities take and, and how often they're ex executed, basically. If you move to the next slide, which I, which I, which I like very much, um, this is kind of this um, standard building, um, I would say, animation that shows how the cases are running through the process. And why I like this, this, I call this chart the thrombosis chart. So if you flew here to the process mining camp in a, you know, in a, on a plane and like you were not exercising with your legs, this is what's happening in your veins. And um, we use this uh, thrombosis chart also <laughs> now in, the, in our marketing campaign. Um, we have a kind of small marketing campaign in front of the canteen where this Process, um, process chart or the video visualization is running basically just to capture people's attention. And these are the things that really capture people's attention. And, and you, I, I saw you know, people going to, the, to lunch and seeing what's this? Okay, I stop by, what's this process mining? Maybe I can educate myself. Who are these guys? Oh, this sounds interesting. So, um, but also the, the animation itself gives value because we use it for kind of the bottleneck analysis. So we see that like where there is a traffic jam in a process, where the kind of people who are busy, in which steps, and where we can kind of improve the process as well. Okay. Um, and we also, of course, looked at the SLAs, uh, fulfillment, because, you know, if it's if it takes more than 30 days to get you a loan, you probably already are somewhere in a different bank. So did a little bit of a filtering in order to figure out um, whether we are meeting these SLAs uh, in place, which we do in this case. Okay. okay. Maybe I hand over a little bit to, the cl to Klaus um, and yeah, we'll talk about a little bit about the conformance checks that we touched a little bit at the beginning yeah this is just just an example from from the from the slide deck uh, so at, at the end uh, what we do here is uh, uh, we prepare an overview of all these assumptions uh, which we do in this black box uh, uh, exercise and then we we try to apply the filtering and then uh, either we we get a confirmation or not and then uh, we raise some questions uh, and what you see here as well is uh, we have a, a column which is called severity. So we do an, an internal assessment, uh, how we, we assess this from a range from uh, zero to five. 
uh, if, if we see here uh, a weak or a strong deviation from, from the expected assumption. Yeah? Uh, and then and, and the color coding also supports this. Yeah? So, and, and then uh, we, we go to, to the, either to the, uh, to the, to the uh, ma manager or to the uh, domain experts and have a discussion on that. And uh, behind we have the filters and we can also show it uh, in the tool and, and then go into more details and provide them all the data which is needed. And we did this uh, quite, quite uh, a couple of times now. And normally they are interested in all these cases. Yeah? And then we provide them uh, the filter the filter data and then they can go in their um, legacy systems, for example, or the, the original systems and then do their, their own analysis. Um, so um, if you want, Josef, man, you can jump in, in the, I don't know, in the one or two cases. Uh, otherwise, uh, this would, this would uh, uh, be the, the, our last slide here. So um, findings uh, after the first year of process mining. Um, so. What is quite important is this awareness building, yeah? and we're doing here um, some some things. Uh, and but uh, we we have to continue because um, what we have perceived is that people are talking to externals that we are doing process mining in the bank, but they are not interested to do it with us. Yeah? Uh, so I would say. Uh, they, for example, uh, they, uh, the regulator was uh, invited and they gave a presentation to the, to the regulator and they told the regulator and then they asked for slides um, uh, that uh, we are doing process mining. Yeah? But uh, when we approach them, then they have some resistance and some reluctance to do this process mining. Yeah? And also uh, it's like we're pretty huge banking groups so of 50,000 people and it also happened to us that we went to a conference and they were talking about process mining, there were other people from our bank and they, they said, wow, this is exciting, we should do this and we were like, yeah, we're already doing that, we can help you out. <laughs> so, <laughs> this happens. Yeah. Um, so, when we are currently at this stage here turning data into insights but we are, we're still struggling a little bit here to, to turn it into value. Uh, so that the uh, business units are really able to, to, to derive concrete measures. But, uh, we, we are providing them the data. Normally, uh, we are not tracking the outcome. Yeah? So then we hand over, you know, the findings, the insights, and then it's up, up to the, to the uh, process product owner. Uh, to, to follow up on this. And I think we still have like kind of a um, room for improvement here, of yep. course, because cause kind of we do these also conformance checks and we tell them, look, this is strange, and like, can you look into that? And then they, they say, oh, yeah, it's because probably this and that, but then, you know, like we leave and did they actually act upon those suggestions? I think this is something we need to still, you know, work yeah, I mean, on. The next finding, probably all of us uh, have this finding that uh, data preparation is key and uh, normally it's... Uh, it's uh, more effort than, uh, than expected. Um, so when we, we decided uh, to, um, to ask the, our counterparts for the full data set, uh, not asking them to, to do any, any preparation up front or any, any, any selection of specific data. So normally we do this on our own because we believe uh, we can do it faster. Because uh, normally, you know, we are, we are quite a um, traditional bank uh, and we have to involve the different uh, units, IT uh, departments, and then it takes quite a long time. So you have to, you have, you have to follow the procedures. So, so normally uh, we prefer that, that we do this. Um, yeah but this will, won't be a surprise for most of you. Uh, I think that this is also important, that uh, you find the right people with this uh, curious mindset, so who are really interested to, to dig uh, deeper and then to dig into the data and to find strange patterns. Yeah? So if you don't have this, this mindset, then uh, probably uh, you will, yeah, you will screen the data, but then after a certain time you will give up and uh, maybe you won't have these nice findings. Um, yeah, this was mentioned before. So currently, uh, we are here in the situation after these 12 months to to, to make our mind up. Uh, should we should we go for a more centralized approach to to have this kind of center of expertise, the center of expertise or uh, um, center of excellence for process mining, or should we go more with a decentralized approach? Just uh, um, having some, some governance and, and doing this education, and then it, uh, leave it to the countries. So as, as mentioned, we have these uh, certain countries. Um, so here we, we, are not, we have not made a decision yet for other of our capabilities. Uh, when we, we, we are normally deciding this really um, at, on, on an on a case by case basis. So for example, we, we, we build up for robotics, uh, we build up a centralized 
center of excellence. So um, we're not sure yet now, yeah? Um, uh, but um, we embedded uh, process mining in our toolbox. Uh, and um, but uh, process mining as, as a, a standalone capability is nice, but we believe that um, we can um, increase the impact if we combine it with other capabilities. Someone mentioned already today, uh, you know, using process mining and uh, robotic process automation, so to doing the the upfront analysis. And uh, when you look uh, at the at the markets, uh, you will see a lot of corporations of uh, RPA. Uh, solution providers with process mining uh, providers. So there is already an ongoing cooperation. Um, we do this as well. So currently, for example, we are running, we are running uh, out of time, uh, but uh, we are running an exercise. <laughs> um, so in, in, a, in a transformation uh, on bank level where we also use process mining uh, in the, we try to identify automation uh, potential uh, either for, for RPA or for, for other capabilities. And the last, uh, the last uh, topic is, and that uh, now uh, concludes uh, our, our initial uh, title. Um, so we believe that um, the best impact would be from our side if we are able to really embed process mining in, in huge, also in bigger uh, transformation exercise on bank level. So as, as a standard tool, as a standard capability. Yeah? And then uh, we, we use these insights and can work on that. So this, this would be, that's it from our side now. So open for any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'll start off with the first question. So as a central efficiency group, you have been working uh, with different business units for all the different pilots that you've done with ProSmining. Yep. I'm wondering, did you notice any differences uh, from a cultural perspective that the business units in certain countries were more open to it than others or did you find it to be the same? I mean, we, we have our kind of usual suspects when it comes to countries that are like more advanced and you know more eager to jump on new things and um, so, so when there's like new tool that we want to research or POC I have my three countries that I usually call like look this is cool you know let's try it out let's jump on that let's see what what comes out of that could you just give me the data could you give me your time could you give me access to your systems and let's see um, how what comes out of that. And these are more or less the more mature and bigger countries. But uh, we had also experience in, in smaller network banks where maybe things are less complex as well. Um, so it's kind of a mixture of be yeah, between would, these I, things. I would fully subscribe what you said. So there is, there is a cultural thing. So when we are operating here in different geographies, yeah. Uh, but also um, if, if I just look at um, different functional areas, yeah? for example, the finance area is different, or accounting, yeah? uh, but it's the same, and we are currently in this agile transformation, yeah? so it uh, um, does not make sense to apply it maybe in all areas in, in our, within our bank, uh, and then there is in some areas just more resistance, more reluctance, uh, so again, so it's the, about the awareness building, so what's in there yeah, for the business, so what's really this, this, um, this added value for them? Yeah. And also in terms of the life cycle, because currently in most of our countries, the banking is booming, it's great, it's good days, you know. So, so no, maybe not, people are not so open to like doing improvements all the time, but like when the, you know, uh, maybe worst times comes, they will be more open to try and kind of try to find efficiency or like try to improve their processes as well. Right, pressure to improve. Yeah. Yes. Okay, thank you. First question uh, over here, yes. Um, you, you have said you have uh, done that as a black box experiment. Uh, what's the next step? Now are you going to now discuss with the different uh, implied business to try to find improvements and derive potentially some value from, from this exercise? I will take that one. Yeah. Um, the next steps for sure, so because uh, now we have kind of awareness already, yeah, and, and uh, now is to really to embed it in, in these transformation exercises, and uh, we are currently running uh, a major transformation here in, in the headquarter, and here it's already onboarded uh, in, in one of the substreams. Um, so this would be our, our, our I would say, um, target for the next couple of months. Yeah? 
uh, to, to embed it somewhere in, in these uh, huger transformations because then we can get higher impact. So that's what, what, what we believe. Uh, but in parallel, we will do all this, uh, you know, these standalone ad hoc discoveries as well. Yeah? But uh, currently, we are really at this, at this uh, tipping point here uh, how to scale. Yeah? So, because uh, as, as I mentioned, uh, we, we started now 12 months ago. We have uh, now we have just two, we are working with two licenses, uh, and then, then uh, we are using uh, just a few colleagues. So the the unit itself is is not that that huge, uh, and it's it, as as you have seen, we have all these other capabilities as well. So process mining is a, is a kind of a, a hobby. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we we also have to take care of all the other capabilities, but. Uh, um, we still believe that uh, it's, it's quite a, a valuable a capability and um, yeah, um, may, maybe let's talk uh, next year on the I mean, we believe really that like camp, huh? our job is also yeah. to do a little bit of research in these capabilities and bring these capabilities through proof of concepts um, to our financial institution to sell it and then to find a way how you can combine these into one meaningful, you know, digital transformation and then uh, how to combine these capabilities together? With, this is really kind of like what well, where we're heading. To be honest, man, I would uh, I would love to, to to use this continuous monitoring, and I've seen it in other industries. Yeah, so, so they they you know they inter interfacing a couple of systems or a hundred of systems, and they have this uh, online real life monitoring. Yeah? But we are far away, so we just we just started, and will take some time. Thank you. So firstly, I would like to thank you for sharing some of your observations. I come from the insurance industry, and I can very well relate to a lot of the specific case studies that you uh, talked about and some of the insights that you got. My question is around your first bullet. Um, I know you're in the, in the process of bringing more awareness within the bank. Can you talk a little bit more about what specific steps you have taken uh, to get this awareness more uh, broader within the banking community? Yeah, for sure. And so process mining per se is not known normally to a bank employee. Yeah? So uh, therefore, you have to start really from, from with the basics. Yeah? So, and then what we did is uh, we, we uh, posted uh, on the, in the internet portal, uh, we wrote some articles uh, in magazines, uh, we invited business people to so-called business breakfast to educate them on the different capabilities. So this is a, an ongoing journey. Yeah? And, and then we also started to offer this, this, uh, this free lunch uh, discoveries yeah? so that uh, we told them, okay, um, let's do it as really as a mini, mini, mini discovery um, within a, a few days. So we offered them, okay, if you can provide us the data, we need two to three days, and then we will show up uh, in your office, uh, and we, we are able to discuss with you your high-level process. Yeah? And uh, we found some colleagues uh, who were willing to do that, uh, and, and then uh, um, I would say it's, it's, um, it's, it's a journey as well, yeah? so because uh, still um, business units are approached by external consultants, yeah? that process mining could be a great tool for them. Yeah? Uh, and it seems that they are not either reading our, our blogs or our, our posts. Uh, uh, and, and, but finally, then uh, we, we, when we find out that uh, someone is interested, then we can approach them as well. This is actually very recently where colleagues from our network banks like called me up and they said, oh, there were these consultants, they were showing me some cool stuff, it shows like the processes, you can analyze it very quickly, I don't know what it is called, but maybe this is something that you're doing. So there's like, you know, this awareness building across the bank is something that we're continuously uh, working on. Um, we have to work on. Also quite interesting that uh, um, that's now also the, the, the data science team approached us because um, Process mining really allows uh, this, this cool visualization. Yeah? And uh, they're now uh, also looking for some type of cooperation uh, because there are some, some areas where process mining can do a great job. Uh, and then also the, the data science colleagues uh, can, can uh, use it uh, for further analysis or for um, cluster analysis, finding patterns. Yeah? So, so it's... Uh, uh, I don't know where we will be in, uh, in, you know, in the next 12 months, but um, I, I, 
I think that we have to continue this, this awareness building. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it, it makes sense also to mention that we have a colleague, um, she's kind of almost half of her time devoting to, to doing PR yeah. marketing yeah. For, for us, not just for this capability, for our whole division and what we're doing. So she's organizing all these blogs and you know, you know, articles in the newspapers, business lunches, breakfasts, branding. And so we, we kind of really take this seriously because within such a large organization, there are many good and nice and interesting things happening and everybody wants to promote them. So there's abundance of things that, you know, you go for lunch and there's like posters, we do this, we do that. You know, everybody's kind of promoting what they do and, and you have to kind of keep up with, with the rest of the, 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 web, the bank. Yeah, so we are putting some effort in, in this marketing. So we have also an uh, annual uh, summit with all the network banks where you educate them uh, on, on such capabilities and present it to them so that they can, can come back to us. And uh, for example, we, we last week um, we got some interest from, from Belarus, so maybe now we can go to Belarus. We don't know, yeah? So uh, <laughs> hopefully, yeah. We love Belarus. Yeah. yeah. Um, thanks for your presentation. I just wondered whether or not you did any stratification by location, because um, my gut feel is that there is possibly some insights, you know, even if you think of the same process, by country. Um, I wonder if you did any anal analysis along that line. Um, so if, if I got your question right, you mean if there are some similarities among the countries? Or differences. Or, or differences. Um, so same now, process. I, I would say there are, there are probably more differences than the similarities. Because um, um, we are kind of, um, and we don't have a strong governance from the headquarters, so we are... Um, it's a very federative uh, have, model where we kind we of allow the weak, countries... A weak federal model, so, yeah. so the... the the countries, and as I mentioned in, in the beginning, they have different legislations and jurisdictions, so they have to do processes differently for, for some specific reasons. Uh, in general, I would agree that there should be a kind of standardized process, but um, um, we are not rolling out here from, from a head office uh, a kind of a role model or a standardized process, so it's up to the countries. So it looks black and yellow if you go to two different countries, but the process is different, even though it might be consumer lending, it's different system behind, and maybe it's not so much harmonized, but uh, I think this is some, something where we still have a little bit of a room for improvement to go on. So we are, we are not like this, this bank in U Utrecht, yeah, so we, we, they, can, they can do this uh, strong centralization and, you know, roll out to, to all the outlets. Yeah. And, and I think it's also maybe worth to mention because this push and pull approach and really with the process mining, we do this pull approach. So like, you know, this is the thing, you're interested, come call us. If not, we're not gonna knock on your door every day and you know, forcing you to do two things, there are other things. If you're not interested, thank yeah. you. That, that's, that's an important point. So um, we don't have a clear mandate you know, to, force, to force network banks or units to do process mining. So we have to convince them we try to convince them uh, by, by doing these exercises and by, by showing them the results and what they can get out of such an exercise. And of course, if you embed it in like a large scale digital transformation on a bank level where there's like 15 board members sitting on a steering committee and you present the results, then people tend to pay attention and then people tend to then also follow up on these results. But if you do it just ad hoc, you know, two guys talking about the data, maybe, you know, they're, they're not so eager to act upon uh, the findings. Thank you. Okay. I saw, and thank you for the presentation. That was very interesting insight. On one of the slides, I saw that you tried to do some conformance checking. I guess mm -hmm. you have the large bank, yeah. have a lot of these BPM and graphs done in the past with, um, with whatever tools. How difficult did you find to relate the BPMM, which was done manually, uh, th this is to the process mining? Yeah. This is a, bit, a little bit misleading. Ah. So when we are talking about conformance, uh, we didn't mean that uh, we do this, you know, take the, the uh, definition from a PPM uh, and compare it. So uh, we, as, as you can see here, uh, we try to find a kind of general conformance. Um, so our assumptions uh, and how they are fulfilled 
um, by, by, the, by the logs. Yeah? Uh, so this is a little bit misleading. So we are not doing this conformance check taking, uh, so we are not using any, any existing uh, standard, standardized uh, operating procedures models out of that. So um, our approach is different here. Yeah? But we could do this, um, but um, there are some tools uh, out in the market uh, which allow this uh, to do uh, quite, quite easily. Um, but anyhow, I would say our descriptions uh, in the underlying systems are not, not that good. Uh, and then we would have this, uh, this uh, geography. So, no, we are not doing that. So, that was a little yeah. bit misleading. I, I would rather maybe call this like hypothesis testing. So, we looked into the data and like we formulate our hypothesis, for example, in this case, when, like, you know, it doesn't make sense to have a property evaluation after we rejected your loan. Doesn't make sense, but that was our hypothesis. And then we found out, like, for some of the clients, we rejected them, but we still ordered a property evaluation for which we paid for. Doesn't really make sense why that happened, and like, it's kind of like hypothesis testing rather than, than conformance testing, I would say. Okay, thank you. Thank you. One more question over there. More questions. Um, what assumption have you taken, and what did you do uh, before you started treat process mining as the black box? So what we did before? Yeah, what assumption you have taken to treat uh, this analysis as the black box? So what data preparation have you done? Ah, okay, you mean uh, this time paper. to be ensured um, that you can treat this analysis as the black box? Um, yeah, so either, so normally we ask the countries to provide the data, so we, we do not support them, yeah? so they have to extract it, either they, they need some support by their IT colleagues, or they can do it on their own. Um, if, if they want to, because they have to talk anyhow to their legal and compliance department, so if they are allowed to, to share it with us, yeah? so in, in Vienna, mm -hmm. Uh, and if there is the need for, for anonymization, then they, they, can, they have to do it, or we tell them, for example, we can do this with Disco. Yeah? So pressing a button and then data gets anonymized as well. Um, but I'm not sure if this is answering your question. Yeah? So, okay. uh, it's more like um, when you're conducting the process mining analysis, then you need to meet some um, assumptions. Like, yeah. for example, have you always I don't know, take always the finished cases, or ah, okay. you filter out these cases that are still running. So, so you mean, can we how we find these assumptions, or how yeah. we make them? Yeah, so when we have some domain expertise, mm. high-level expertise, okay. yeah, for this, um, and then we sit together okay. and do brainstorming, yeah, uh, and um, when we have also some, some, some patterns already, yeah, so okay. how, we, how we do this yeah, from, from case to case. But, but um, may, maybe it's, it's more the question going direction if you understand your data before you start to, yeah. that you know what is in the data, I or mean, you we, really treated everything as the black box. We kind of meet with the executives, so they tell us what the kind of the unit is yeah. doing and what does kind of system that is providing data, like what do they use it for, so we have a vague idea of like what the data is, okay. is used for. And, and we do a little bit of a prioritization also at the beginning, okay. so we say, look, Maybe we have 13 countries, maybe it's too much data. Do you have a country that is maybe more problematic that you want to look at? And they say, oh, well, I want to you know, look at country X. I want to only look at product that is specific over here. And please disregard everything that was before 2017. And please look at only the complex products that we use in trade finance, because this is where we have a problem. And then they give us the data. So, so that's kind of the really high level understanding of, of, the, of the process that we have. Yeah. Market, what kind of data is, and then you start to yes. yeah, yes. Man, to some, yeah okay, we, we need this understanding, and okay. sometimes it can happen that um, that we also uh, do not really this this uh, fully black box exercise, that so that we have to ask them already uh, before we start the analysis because uh, okay, um, we have to be sure that we are using the right data, right data. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, maybe we can also eliminate. Uh, you know, a, a part of the data because uh, this is not in the focus. Yeah, so we have to find out this upfront, uh, and then uh, we we really have these uh, these quite agile sessions where we where we uh, do this uh, assumption uh, making this hypothesis. Yeah, and then. Uh, 
especially if we see like some extremities or like some really weird stuff in the data, we have to come back and say, are you sure like you gave us everything? Because like we see that it's like project is running for four years and like it's so not finished, like how come? Like yeah, so we are, we are looking in outliers, we are looking you know, for bottlenecks, we are looking for SLA violations. Um, so any strange patterns we can identify. So just you know, doing the simple animation, yeah, which is really great and helpful, uh, we can already identify areas where it makes sense to go into more details. Answers your question? Okay. I suggest we take the remaining questions into the, the discussion, into the break. Let's thank Klaus and Joseph thank again. You. Thank okay. you.